So, Minister, uh, thank you very much for this interview. We've had a very good uh, meeting this morning, very interesting uh, presentations, uh, a very enriching debate on how to improve the human rights-based approach uh, uh, in terms of, of instruments and in terms of sophistication of the instrument. But the question that we would like to put to you is about the political feasibility of this approach. How do you apply this in the context of some of the African countries that are not always willing to accept these type of uh, human rights-based approaches? If you place human rights <coughs> right in the center of your development policy, uh, I think you can reach out to even those countries who may have some resistance because we take the broad set of human rights. It's everything from the right to food, the right to shelter, the right to education, and to the freedom of expression and the freedom to organize and participate in your own society. And by taking the broad set of human rights exactly as we have written them down internationally during the past 200 years and written them down together and signed onto them together, by taking the broad set of human rights, you can actually reach out to all countries because all countries are striving to improve some of the human rights. And there you can start. And the goal is there, written down internationally, but the process you can respect by taking the broad set of rights into your development policy. How do you do this in certain countries where our strategic European interests are quite important? Uh, I'm not talking of uh, your own country, but we have other member states that have strong political and uh, security interests. How do you apply this uh, human rights-based approach in these type of countries? Do you think that they are willing to follow the type of uh, uh, approach that is being proposed by the European Union? Well, I'm actually quite humble about what you can do from outside in terms of changing human rights, but I'm extremely optimistic about what you can do from inside, uh, why the people can do it themselves. Look at the Arab Spring, uh, look at the fundamental changes you've seen throughout the past 200 years where people have taken human rights in their hand and strived and struggled to create change from within. And that's where change comes from. Uh, so this is not about old-fashioned conditionality. This is about supporting people's ability to fight for their own rights uh, by means of engaging in their own societies. And there we can inspire, uh, and even more so in a times of social media and information technology by partnerships that goes beyond borders uh, where business uh, and universities and civil society organizations cooperate across the world you know there you can really build a strong human rights based approach and that's what leaves me uh, very optimistic how do you uh, assess the uh, approaches that are now being applied, for example, in Northern Africa, eh? the more for more approach? Last week we had in Brussels uh, the launch of the uh, endowment uh, for democracy. Uh, um, how do you assess the feasibility of these uh, instruments at uh, this very moment in certain African countries where the political situation is quite complex? Eh? What should Europe do to make sure that these instruments are really used in an effective manner? I really believe that we, if you base your international engagement on human rights, it becomes much more binding uh, because you build upon the global conventions that we have all signed. Mm. And that's also why our partnership becomes more binding. It is a more for more results-based uh, framework that we enter into where we say we will assist you in reaching and fulfilling some of the fundamental human rights, getting the kids to school or getting health clinics all over our country or improving the, uh, the, the, the freedom of the press. We will assist you, uh, mm -hmm. but it's a contractual basis, something for something. You sign, we sign, let's work together, implementing core human rights for, for all people. That's how we increasingly will see it coming. And that puts obligations on our partner countries, but it puts obligations on us as well. We have to deliver, we have to be accountable, we have to shape participation in our own decision-making uh, systems. You know, we can't take decisions our own anymore. All of that puts obligations on us as well. Okay. We've learned uh, also today that Denmark is quite well advanced in this human rights-based approach and I think it's also the merit of you and your administration to have pushed uh, this so much. But to what extent is this uh, becoming a European approach? What is the possibility of making sure that this becomes a real, truly owned European type of approach? But this is definitely something that unites us in Europe. All countries have a strong set of rights and obligations uh, for their 
uh, own citizens uh, and uh, and people and citizens all over Europe struggle for their own rights within every community within every society within every country uh, so this is part of our history it's part of our legacy it's part of what we know works we know that by means of human rights and a market-based economy you can create miracles uh, for your people this is our legacy and I think this positive story we should bring uh, also to the attention of the entire world and we shouldn't shy away from standing firm on these principles because we know it works. Do you think that the institutional system in the European Union at this moment is fully adapted to deal with this uh, new human rights based approach? What should change to make sure that it is workable? I believe we have st we still in member countries and in the European uh, Union uh, think a little bit in silos. We have human rights over here and development policy here, trade policy is dealt with uh, in a different place and, and fisheries and agriculture uh, in, in, in yet uh, other uh, different uh, institutions. And human rights should unite it all. Human rights has to do with agriculture, it has to do with fisheries, it has to do with, with trade and development policy. Uh, and incorporating a human rights based approach in that manner is definitely a daunting task but it's also an extremely rewarding uh, task uh, and if you do it I think we can really inspire others and we can strengthen our partnerships worldwide uh, in the vision that with human rights and economic growth uh, we can solve a lot of the problems in the world. Thank you very much Mr. Minister. Thank you.